My name is Emily, and I'm just your average 29-year-old woman living alone in a small, cozy apartment. Today, I'm sitting at my dining table, staring at the phone. It's been ringing on and off for the past hour, but I can't bring myself to answer it. It's Mark, my fiancé, wanting to talk about meeting my parents. The thought alone makes my stomach turn. Mark's voice comes through the voicemail again. Hey Em, just checking in. We really should plan on meeting your folks soon. Call me back, okay. I let out a sigh and look around my apartment. It's nothing fancy, but it's mine. The walls are lined with bookshelves and a small balcony overlooks the city. It's my little haven, far away from the memories of my childhood. Growing up wasn't easy. My dad left us when I was five. I still remember the day he walked out, suitcase in hand, not even a backward glance. Mom changed after that. She became distant, cold, and often angry. And somehow, I always seemed to be the target of her frustration. Two years after Dad left, Mom remarried. My stepdad, Rick, was actually a decent guy. He tried to make things better, but Mom's attention was all on my little half-sister, Lily. Lily was everything I wasn't, or at least that's how Mom made it seem. She was showered with love and affection while I was just there. I was snapped out of my thoughts by another call. It was Mark again. I finally picked up. Hey, Mark. I said, trying to sound cheerful. Emily, I've been trying to reach you. So when can we plan to meet your parents? Mark's voice was full of excitement, oblivious to my hesitation. Um, I'm not sure, Mark. It's complicated. I replied, fiddling with a pen on the table. What's complicated? It's just dinner? M. I really want to meet the people who raised my incredible fiancé, Mark said. I let out a forced laugh. You wouldn't say that if you knew my mom. She's, well, she's a lot to handle. Mark went silent for a moment. Is everything okay, M? You know you can tell me anything. I took a deep breath. It's just that my mom and I, we don't really have the best relationship. She's always been hard on me. It's nothing like your family. Mark's voice softened. I'm here for you, Emily. We'll figure this out together. Maybe it's time to face this. You know any of you is right, but the thought of facing my mom of exposing Mark to her sharp tongue and cold demeanor terrified me. Yeah, maybe, I said, not entirely convinced. Let's talk about it later. I need some time to think, okay, Mark. I love you, you know that, right? Mark said. I know, Mark. I love you too, I replied. Sitting in my apartment, my mind wandered back to those early years after Dad left. They were tough, to say the least. Mom's whole world seemed to crumble, and her heartache turned into anger that was often directed at me. I remember one particularly hard day. I was seven, trying to do my homework at the kitchen table. Mom was pacing around, her face tight with worry and frustration. Emily, can't you see I'm busy? Stop making that racket with your pencil, she snapped suddenly. Sorry, Mom, I mumbled trying to be quieter. It wasn't long after that when Mom met Rick. He was different, kind, and gentle. But Mom changed when she was with him. She seemed happier. But that happiness never really reached me. When Lily was born, it was like I became invisible. One evening, I overheard Mom talking to Rick in the living room. I wasn't meant to hear, but I did. She's just so difficult. Rick, nothing like Lily. I don't know what to do with her. Mom's voice was full of frustration. I felt my heart sink. Even then, I knew she was talking about me. Rick tried to reason with her. She's just a kid, Helen. She needs your love. 
not your disappointment. But mom wouldn't listen. She reminds me too much of him. She said bitterly that night, I cried myself to sleep. It was clear I wasn't the daughter she wanted. As I got older, the gap between us only widened. When I was around 10, I remember trying to show mom a drawing I'd done in school. Look, mom. I got an A on this, I said, holding up my artwork. She barely glanced at it. That's nice, dear. Go show Rick. I'm busy. But Rick was different. He took one look at my drawing and smiled. This is fantastic, Emily. You're really talented. I remember how warm his praise felt, but it couldn't fill the void left by Mom's indifference. Those years were a blur of feeling like I didn't belong, like I was an outsider in my own home. Mom was always quick to point out my flaws, especially as I hit my teenage years. It was a constant stream of, don't slouch, that outfit is unflattering, or why can't you be more like Lily? My teenage years were like navigating a minefield, always cautious, trying not to set off another round of criticism or disapproval from Mom. I was 15 when the weight of her words really started to bear down on me. One evening, I was getting ready for a school dance. I had picked out a dress I thought looked pretty good on me. I twirled in front of the mirror in my room, feeling a rare moment of confidence. Mom, can you help me with my hair? I called out, stepping into the living room. Mom looked up from her magazine, her eyes scanning me up and down. You're wearing that. It's a bit snug, don't you think? You should really watch your weight. Her words hit me like a slap. I, I thought it looked okay. I stammered, my confidence shattered. Mom sighed, standing up. Let me do your hair. Maybe it'll draw attention away from your figure. I sat there in silence, feeling small and ashamed as she roughly pulled my hair into a style. School wasn't much of an escape either. One day, I was sitting with a few classmates at lunch, talking about our families. So Emily, what's your mom like? One of the girls, Sarah, asked casually. I hesitated, not sure how to answer. Um, she's strict, very particular about things, I said. Sarah seemed to sense the tension in my voice. Hey, it's okay. Moms can be tough. Mine's always on my case about grades. I forced a smile, appreciating her attempt to relate. But inside, I felt that my situation was different more isolating. Back at home, things got even more strained when I started to show interest in boys. One time, I had a guy from school, Jake, come over to study. He was nice, funny, and I kind of liked him. We were in the living room working on a project when mom walked in. Emily, make sure you're actually studying and not distracting the boy with your silly crushes, she said loud enough for Jake to hear. I was mortified. Jake looked uncomfortable and the air was filled with awkwardness. After we left, I confronted mom. Why did you have to say that in front of Jake? It was so embarrassing. Mom shrugged, unfazed. I'm just stating the obvious, Emily. Besides, boys like him aren't interested in girls with your build. Her words stung deeply, and from that point on, I was even more cautious about bringing friends, especially boys, home. During those years, I often sought refuge in Rick, my stepdad. He was always kinder, more understanding. One evening when Mom was out, I opened up to him. Rick, do you think I'm unattractive? I asked hesitantly. Rick looked surprised. Emily, you're beautiful. Don't ever let anyone make you feel otherwise, not even your mom. By the time I hit my early 20s, 
My experiences with mom had left a deep imprint on my confidence, especially when it came to relationships. I was always second-guessing myself, wondering if I was good enough. I remember dating a guy named Alex during college. He was sweet and seemed to genuinely like me. One day, I decided to introduce him to my family, despite my reservations about mom. We were having dinner at my parents' house. Rick was his usual welcoming self, but mom was another story. She had this way of giving backhanded compliments that could cut you down to size. So Alex, what are you studying? Mom asked, passing the salad. Engineering, Alex replied, smiling. I'm hoping to get into renewable energy projects after graduation. That's ambitious. Hopefully you're not biting off more than you can chew, like some people. Mom glanced at me as she said this, an obvious jab at my past academic struggles. I felt my face heat up with embarrassment. Alex seemed to sense the tension, but tried to keep the conversation light. The evening went downhill from there. Every time I said something, Mom found a way to twist it into a criticism. When Alex and I were leaving, I apologized profusely. I'm so sorry about that, Alex. My mom can be difficult. Alex squeezed my hand. Hey, it's not your fault. But it does make things a bit complicated, doesn't it? I knew what he meant. The relationship eventually fizzled out. It wasn't just about that night, but it was a pattern. My insecurity, fueled by mom's constant belittling, made it hard to maintain a healthy relationship. Fast forward a few years, and I met Mark. He was different, kind, patient, and he had a way of making me feel valued. But the scars from my past were always lurking beneath the surface. One evening, we were at my apartment, talking about our future. Emily, I love you, and I want us to have a future together. Mark said, Hold in my hands. I love you too, Mark, but I'm scared. My past, my mom, it's all so messy. I don't want to drag you into my issues. Mark looked into my eyes. Your past doesn't define us. Yes, it's part of you, but it doesn't have to dictate our future. We'll face it together. The day of the dinner with my parents had me tangled in nerves. Mark, always optimistic, tried to ease my anxiety as we drove to my parents' house. It's just dinner, Emily. It'll be okay, he reassured me. But my stomach churned with unease. We were greeted at the door by Rick, his warm smile a small comfort. Emily, Mark, welcome. Come on in, he said cheerfully. Mom was in the kitchen. And as I saw her, I felt a familiar tension grip me. She managed a polite smile for Mark, but her eyes were distant. Dinner's nearly ready. Why don't you both sit down? She said, gesturing towards the dining table. The atmosphere was strained as we all sat down. Rick tried to lighten the mood, engaging Mark in conversation. So, Mark. What do you do for a living? Mark, unaware of the undercurrents, answered cheerfully. I actually own a company. We specialize in environmental consulting. I saw a flicker of something in mom's eyes at his response. Was it interest or maybe even greed? It was hard to tell. That sounds impressive, mom said, her tone suddenly more amicable. A company owner, no less. You must be doing quite well for yourself. Her words had an edge, and I felt a familiar pang of discomfort. The rest of the dinner progressed tensely, with mom alternating between subtly belittling me and praising my younger sister, Lily, who wasn't even present. Every now and then, she would direct the conversation back to Mark, asking about his business and future plans. Each time, I saw that same glint in her eyes, 
like she was assessing his worth, not just as a person, but for what he could offer. As we left that evening, I felt a mix of relief and frustration. The ride home was quiet until Mark broke the silence. Your mom seems interested in my business. A bit too interested, maybe. I sighed, feeling drained. Yeah, she has a way of evaluating people. I'm sorry, Mark. This is just how it's always been. Mark squeezed my hand, his support unwavering. We're in this together, Emily. Remember that. The next morning after the dinner, I was still reeling from Mom's comments when Mark's phone rang. It was an unknown number. I watched as his expression changed from curiosity to shock. Hang on, what did you just say? Mark asked, his voice rising in disbelief. I could hear a faint, muffled voice on the other end, but couldn't make out the words. Mark hung up, his face a mix of confusion and anger. That was your mom, he said, looking at me. She, she just proposed something outrageous. I felt a cold shiver down my spine. What are you talking about, Mark? He took a deep breath. She suggested that I should leave you and consider marrying Lily instead. I felt like I had been punched in the stomach. She said, what? Mark nodded, his face grim. She said that you weren't right for me and that Lily would be a better fit. She was serious, Emily. I was speechless. The idea that my own mother would go to such lengths was beyond belief. We need to do something about this, Mark said, his jaw set. This isn't just about us anymore. It's about exposing her for who she really is. I nodded a mix of anger and determination building inside me. We could record her saying it, catch her in the act. Mark agreed. Let's do it. Let's show everyone her true colors. The plan was set. Mark would call my mom back, expressing interest in her proposal, and we would record the conversation. That evening, we sat in my living room, the phone on speaker. Mark dialed my mom's number, and I hit record on my phone. Hello, Helen? It's Mark, he said, his voice calm but firm. Mark, darling, I'm so glad you called back. Have you thought about what I suggested? Mom's voice was sickly sweet. Mark played along. Yes, I have. It's an interesting idea, but I need to know. Why do you think Emily isn't right for me? There was a pause. Then mom replied, Oh, Mark, you're such a catch. You deserve someone better. Someone like Lily. Emily has always been a bit of a disappointment. My heart ached hearing those words, but I stayed silent, letting the recording continue. We should meet and discuss this further, maybe over coffee, Mark suggested. That sounds wonderful. Let's do it. I'll arrange a time and place. Mom replied, her voice dripping with eagerness. After hanging up, I felt a whirlwind of emotions, hurt, anger, betrayal. But there was also a sense of purpose. We had a plan, and it was time to expose Mom's true nature. The next few days were a blur of planning and apprehension. Mark and I were going to catch my mom in her own game. He arranged to meet her at a cafe downtown, and I decided to be there, disguised, so I could see everything for myself. On the day of their meeting, I wore a wig and oversized sunglasses, looking like someone completely different. I sat at a table with a clear view of them, my heart pounding in my chest. Mark arrived first, taking a seat at a table near the window. A few minutes later, Mom showed up, looking around before spotting Mark and walking over with a confident smile. Mark, so good to see you, she said, sitting down. Thanks for meeting me, Helen, Mark replied. So, about your proposal. Mom leaned in, her voice low. 
I think it's for the best. Mark, Emily is not suitable for you. Lily, on the other hand, is perfect. She's everything Emily isn't. I felt a lump in my throat, listening to her words. Mark glanced in my direction, giving a subtle nod to indicate the recorder was on. But why are you so against Emily? Mark asked, playing his part perfectly. Mom sighed. Between us, I never wanted Emily. Her father left, and she just reminds me of all the bad times. Lily is my real daughter, the one I actually care about. My hands were shaking under the table. Hearing Mom's words, so cold and heartless, was like a knife twisting in my gut. Mark changed the topic, discussing random things to keep the conversation going while the recorder captured every word. After about 30 minutes, they wrapped up, with Mom looking pleased with herself. As soon as Mom left, I removed my disguise and joined Mark. I can't believe she said those things. I said, tears welling up in my eyes. Mark took my hands. I'm so sorry, Emily, but now we have proof. What do you want to do with it? I took a deep breath, feeling a mix of sadness and determination. We expose her, Mark. At the next family gathering, everyone needs to know the truth. Mark nodded, his expression resolute. We'll do it together. It's time everyone saw the real Helen. We left the cafe with a plan in mind, a plan to finally reveal my mom's true colors to everyone, especially to Rick, who had been in the dark for far too long. The tension was thick in the air as we all gathered at my parents' house for what was supposed to be a routine family dinner. Little did everyone know, Mark and I had a revelation planned that would change everything. As we sat down to eat, my mom, with a triumphant look in her eyes, couldn't hold back. Emily, I have some news. Mark has seen the light. He's left you and is now interested in your sister. Lily. Lily's smile broadened across her face, a mirror image of Mom's smug expression. Rick, sitting beside them, looked absolutely shocked, his fork halfway to his mouth. What are you talking about, Helen? Rick asked, his voice filled with disbelief. Before Mom could elaborate, Mark caught my eye and winked subtly. It was our cue. I reached into my purse, pulled out my phone, and pressed play. The room fell silent as the recording of Mom's conversation with Mark filled the air. As the recording continued, Mom's face turned pale, her eyes widening in shock. Rick looked at her, disbelief etched on his face. What? What is this, Emily? Rick stammered, his voice filled with hurt. I looked directly at Mom. That's you talking to Mark, telling him to leave me for Lily, telling him how little you think of me. Mom tried to interrupt. Emily, this is nonsense. You're just trying to. No, Mom. I cut her off, my voice steady despite the turmoil inside. For once, you're going to listen. I only married Rick out of desperation. If I hadn't had Emily, I could have found someone richer, smarter, more promising. She's always been a burden. As the recording ended, the room was heavy with silence. Rick turned to Mom, his expression a mixture of anger and heartbreak. Helen, is this true? Did you really say these things? Rick asked, his voice trembling. Mom was at a loss for words. Her usual composure shattered. Rick stood up, pushing his chair back. I can't believe this. All these years, I had no idea, he said, looking at me, his eyes full of sorrow. I'm so sorry, Emily. I had no idea. Mom finally found her voice, but it was weak, defensive. Rick, I didn't mean it. 
It was just talk. But Rick wasn't having it. No, Helen. This is unforgivable. I need to think about all of this. He left the room quickly, leaving a heavy silence behind. Mom broke down, sobbing, her usual composed demeanor shattered. Lily sat frozen, her eyes darting between Mom and the door where Rick had exited. Mark took my hand, giving it a reassuring squeeze. You did the right thing, Emily. I nodded, feeling a mix of relief and sadness. It's over. It's finally over. In the following weeks, Rick filed for divorce. I didn't speak to Mom or Lily again. It was painful, but it was a necessary closure. Mark and I got married in a small ceremony. Rick was there, smiling through his tears. He was the only family I needed. As I stood there with Mark, I realized that I was finally free from the shadows of my past. I had found love, not just with Mark, but within myself. For the first time in my life, I felt truly happy and at peace. Thank you.